I was 10 years old. It was a sunny July Monday. My brother, sister and I set off for school and returned normally that afternoon. My sister and I had been invited to play with our friends from the public house called the Picnic Inn in Osmington Mills and to stay for supper. The weather had changed dramatically. It was hot, sultry and overcast. Rain started to fall softly at first, then more and more heavily pelting down from the sky, the drops ricocheting off the ground as if they had been shot from a rifle. The sky was now black and full of menacing thunderclouds. At around 7pm my brother arrived, dripping wet to fetch us home. We struggled up the long steep path against a flood of water. At home mum and dad were obviously worried. The level of the stream was rising fast. Suddenly, crack! An explosion of thunder immediately over our roof. The storm had broken in earnest. I jumped, dropped the plates I was carrying, trembling with fear. Never before nor since have I heard such a noise. Lightning split the skies. The thunder continued. My father came rushing in. The stream is rising. The banks are under water. We children glazed in fascinated horror at the raging storm outside. Someone left the living room to investigate the lowest room in the cottage. Water was already rising under the floor. Soon the waters flooded into the main room of the cottage. We children were sent upstairs to our bedroom and grandmother, while Mum and Dad rescued movable valuables upstairs. We children huddled at the top of the stairs, watching the water rise. One stair was covered, then two, then four... Dad was still struggling with furniture in the muddy, filthy water up to his waist. Finally, he had to give in and retreat upstairs with us. The swirling waters finally stopped rising at the sixth stair, almost halfway up. We squeezed into the tiny window seat in the main bedroom of my grand's bedroom, mesmerised by the destruction before us. As we watched in horror, the garden disappeared. The summer house, the tea house, all the other sheds and outhouses collapsed like cards and were swept up by the torrent, one by one to the sea. Even the old Granny Smith apple was uprooted and was borne away on the flood like a bunch of flowers, carried away to oblivion. The innocent little brook had been transformed into a raging torrent. Fifty feet across, we were marooned, and all we could do was pray that the old cottage stood up to the mighty force of the flood. My mother encouraged us to sing songs and hymns and to cheer our old gran, who could not comprehend what was happening. On reflection, I don't think that we children realised the terrible danger we were in. Our parents did. Our cottage had no foundations. It had just been placed on the ground, as it were. Abruptly, the water ceased rising and began to subside. The deluge outside continued and my parents were puzzled, as well as relieved, until they realised what had happened. All the upstream bridges were wooden and had easily been carried away on the current, but the bridge downstream was concrete and the flood had undermined one end of it, which had dropped creating a dam and thereby forcing the flood back on itself and into our cottage. Finally, the current had carved away past the dropped edge of the bridge under the bungalow next door and once a channel had been formed around the dam, the flood water resumed their surge to the sea. However, the storm still raged and we were still marooned, but the impending danger of the cottage being demolished by the force of the water had ceased. As the dawn broke, the storm abated, and a strange sight met our eyes, a small dinghy fighting its way from the sea against the current. An old friend had realised that this was the only way to get help to us. At first it was impossible for him to do anything, the floodwaters were still too wide and dangerous, but finally he and my father succeeded in fixing a rope over the surging river, along which could be passed food and water. At last we were able to move from our refuge. Downstairs, everything was covered with slimy mud. Miraculously, only one china cup had broken, even though the old dresser with the other furniture had been upturned by the waters. Outside, a scene of desolation and destruction. The beautiful garden had been destroyed. A layer of oozing mud covered everything that was left. Half of the garden was completely missing, torn away by the force of the waters and where once the little stream rippled was now a chasm twenty foot wide and ten foot deep. Even stranger was the side to our left. 
the bungalow next door, precariously poised over six feet of nothing, exposed a quarter of its base. Then began the task of clearing up. A makeshift bridge was thrown over the stream and everything from downstairs had to be taken out to be cleaned. Three days later, a reporter from a Bristol newspaper turned up, having heard a rumour that something had happened at Osmington Mills.